It's never a dull week in the world of AI. Here are some of the coolest updates in AI science and research that I want to share with you this week. This includes Cyborg Brains, the science behind Tesla's Optimus Gen 2 bot, and also AI agents with social learning. Let's jump right in. This week, Tesla released a video of their Optimus Gen 2 robot. Now, just a few years ago, we did have robots, but they could barely balance properly, and they could barely do any detailed movements with their hands. But just look at the flexibility and smoothness of this Gen 2 bot. It moves just like a human, and look at its hands especially, they're just so smooth. They even have tactile sensation on their fingers, and it can handle difficult things like picking up an egg. This is really tough for a robot because you need to apply just the right amount of pressure to hold the egg without breaking it. Now, this is cool and all that, but I wanted to dive deeper into the science of this and how they actually trained a bot to be so dexterous and so smooth. Now, of course, we don't know how Tesla did it. It's confidential, right? But I think this paper is quite interesting and shed some light on how they might have trained the Optimus bot and how future humanoid robots could be trained. So this paper is called Eureka, Human Level Reward Design by Coding Large Language Models. This paper presents an algorithm called Eureka, which is a reward system that's powered by AI. Now to understand how this all works, you first need to understand reinforcement learning, which is a field of machine learning where we set a reward for the AI, and then through millions of iterations and failures and successes, the AI will eventually learn the best way to get the highest amount of reward, right? This is called optimization. And so for example, this is how Google trained AlphaGo a few years back to beat the best Go player in the world, right? So you set the rules of the game and you tell it the reward, which is to beat your opponent. And then after training the AI for millions of games of Go, it will learn the best way to beat the opponent. And so how does this apply to training a robot? Well, for example, if you want to train a robot to balance, maybe the reward is the amount of time that the robot stays balanced and not fall over. So the AI should, in theory, learn to balance for the longest amount of time because that's the highest reward. The problem with this setup is that humans need to define the reward. And often, it might not be the right reward for the robot to learn properly. So going back to the balance example, maybe the length of time staying balanced is not even the right reward to train the robot. So what Eureka does is it generates reward functions by itself. And they call this evolutionary reward search or evolutionary optimization. So you can see here it searches for and defines its own reward. And the results are mind blowing. So what the researchers found was that Eureka generates new rewards and these rewards are weakly correlated with the rewards that are generated by humans, which shows that the goals that we humans set are often not relevant to the robot for learning. Also, the harder the task, the less correlated the Eureka rewards. So basically, the rewards that humans set just suck, especially for harder tasks. It's better if you let the AI set its own goals so that it can learn better and faster. In a few cases, the Eureka rewards are even negatively correlated with human rewards, which basically means that the goal that we set as humans, they were just simply wrong. And Eureka, if you let it define its own goals, it significantly outperformed the human goal in terms of learning. And this is important because for a super hard task like pen spinning, it's usually not intuitive for us humans what goal or reward we should give the bot. Like, it doesn't just lose a point, it's not just game over if they drop the pen, right? It's more complicated than that. You need to successfully execute the spin. So it's really hard for us humans to even determine what goal to set for the bot. But with this Eureka system, you can have it set its own goals, and it would learn and evolve over time based on its own reward functions. So I'm sure this has something to do with how the Tesla bot was trained, or how future humanoid robots will be trained. Alright, this next article is even crazier, and a lot creepier. So if you don't know this already, actually we can grow human brains in a lab just from stem cells. So this is not new. Not only can we grow brains, but also other tissues like a human liver, a heart, we can grow lungs, you can grow whatever you want, but they're kind of isolated as their own organ in a lab. So these are called organoids, and you basically feed it a solution of nutrients so that it stays alive. But this study took it to another level. So they basically connected this 
brain organoid, this human brain that they're growing in a lab, they've connected it with AI. So they hooked it up to a bunch of electric circuits to feed it information as well as get information back from the brain. And then they fed the brain with 240 voice recordings from eight different individuals, and then that brain eventually learned to interpret these recordings and accurately identify the speaker, which I think is just so bizarre. You're basically growing this brain in a lab, and then you can communicate with it. Like, it's a living brain, and you can feed it information, and it can send back information to you, which is just insane. This also gets down some ethical rabbit hole, because if you're growing a human brain in a lab, and you can clearly communicate with it, then is it sentient? Does it have emotions? Does it know it exists? And then if you go down an even deeper rabbit hole, well, a neural network is basically the same design as a human brain. So are all AI systems like ChatGPT, are they actually sentient? Do they have emotions? Do they know they exist? But we can save that for another video. I think the benefit of doing this is that eventually we can do a lot of cool research on brain diseases such as Alzheimer's, and we can test the effects of different treatments on an actual human brain. Equally as interesting is this next article. And just a reminder, I will link all of these articles in the description below. But this article introduces us to the idea of social learning for AI bots. This was done by Google's team at DeepMind and published in Nature Communications. So just to give you a bit of background, traditionally how these large language AI models like ChatGPT or Gemini or Llama how they work is you feed it all the information in the world, and it learns from that. And that's why when you ask it any question, it can give you an answer. But the problem with doing this is it's going to be huge. It's going to take up a lot of space, and you need billions or trillions of parameters per language model. So wouldn't it be more efficient if instead of teaching it everything at once, it just learned what it needed to learn and became an expert at one thing, and then if that expert could then teach other AI bots so that there's knowledge transfer across many different AI bots. This concept of social learning is actually how us humans learn in the real world, right? So most of us are experts or are really good at only a few things. So if there's something that we don't understand, we usually look for advice from someone else who's an expert. So it could be a teacher or a mentor or a consultant. So this article, this project, basically tested whether these AI agents can also learn from each other. So what these researchers did was they put these AI bots in a virtual world of uneven terrain and various obstacles. And the goal of these AI bots or agents is to navigate through this virtual world without hitting any obstacles. And they learn using reinforcement learning, which I talked about earlier in this video. So what they did was they placed some AI bots or agents into this virtual world without giving them any information about the world. So they basically started with zero knowledge and they needed to learn and navigate through this world. They needed to do some trial and error and through reinforcement learning, hopefully learn how to navigate through this world efficiently. However, researchers also added some expert agents who already knew the best way to navigate through this world. And what they found was that when these non-experts came in touch with these expert agents, they quickly learned from the experts and were able to navigate this world much quicker by copying what they learned from the experts. They also retained what they learned. So even if after you take away the expert, the non-experts still kept the skills and they were able to navigate efficiently. So this study just shows us an example that social learning is indeed possible for AI, and this could be a much more efficient way to store knowledge and transfer knowledge. So those are like the most interesting articles that I can find in AI science and research this week. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, be sure to leave a comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.